everybody, Ms. Lasseter here, and today I'm going to answer a question that a lot of students have asked me and something that comes up a lot, and that's how hard is AP Biology and which AP Science exam is the hardest? Now, I can really only speak to comparing science exams next to each other because that's my area of expertise. I'm a science teacher, so if you want to look at the full data set or any of the information I go over today, I'll link that in the description below. But today we're focused on AP science exams, and obviously we're going to look at them using the data from College Board and how many people are successful at each exam, but we're also going to take into account the content and other information that we need to know. So there are going to be teachers and students who will fight me on this, so I think the best way to organize this information is going to be a tier list and I know this meme is a little stale but I think it's the best way to show the AP science exams in order of hardest to easiest as far as the data and other evidence goes. So I have compiled together both the passing rates or percentages of all the students taking all the AP exams for every science exam. I've also looked at the percentage of students who got fives on the exam so that sometimes is a little bit better of an indicator than the actual pass rate which we'll talk about a little bit later on and I've looked at the prerequisite requirements for each of the course. I've done a brief scan of the content and looked at the overall percentage of students earning ones on the exam. So we can't compare each exam just by pass rates because when we're looking at these exams we have to take into account some of these exams are taken as students core courses either in their freshman or sophomore years in high school and so sometimes there may be really low passing rates for those students because it's their first AP exam and they don't really have that experience and it's a larger pool of students. When we get to the more specialized exams, so things like AP Physics C, we're going to see higher passing rates and higher rates of getting fives. But we do know that that is one of the most challenging exams because of the amount of physics and math that you need to know before you actually take it. So we're going to take all that into account today, but let's go ahead and get started by um, putting some of these up here. So I'm going to go through and let you know how I made this decision. You can let me know in the comments below if you agree with me or not, and hopefully this will be helpful for you if you're trying to plan on taking either challenging or less challenging or whatever AP exam or courses that you want to take in high school. All right, so let's start with the obvious AP Physics C. Let's start with this course. Now, I'm putting this up way up high, at least the mechanics exam and the electricity and magnetism exam. These are two separate exams, by the way. Um, I'm making them the hardest because even though they do have one of the higher rates of fives, of students earning fives, we actually have a smaller pool of students actually taking this exam. We have a pretty decent rate of students earning ones. Um, but we do need to take this as a second year physics course and you have to already have or be taking calculus along with this course. So that just makes it more challenging. There's a lot of content on this exam, there's a lot of math, so it is generally known as one of the most challenging AP exams out there. All right, after that, this one really, this was hard for the next one for me, but I'm going to put chemistry as the next hardest. So chemistry actually has um, a rate of 10%, 10.6% of students who take this exam earned a five in 2020. And so that's not super high, um, even though we have about 56% of these students earning a passing score. So if you take AP Chemistry as a course in high school, you know, there's a little bit more than a 50 shot that you're going to actually do well in this exam, but it has a lot of content. It's a lot of math involved. You should have already taken a high school course in chemistry and algebra two if you're taking AP Chem. So there's a little bit of prerequisites involved there. I really was thinking about putting biology up with it, but I think I'm going to drop it down to just a little bit easier, only because we see, even though there's a lower percentage of students earning fives, 9.5% compared to 10.6%, we do see a lower percentage of students earning ones. So that means that fewer students are doing really poorly on this exam, and we see a little bit higher of an overall pass rate, even though before you take AP Bio, you should have already had a biology class and a chemistry class behind you. So you need a little bit of knowledge under your belt. It's less math intensive. You still need to do math on the exam. It's a lot of content, but I would say it's pretty equivalent to AP Chem. So I'm gonna put it below AP Chem. All right, next up, this is where it starts to get a little tricky too. Um, the exams we have left are physics, environmental science, excuse me, physics one, environmental science, physics two, and then the two computer science exams. So those, those are the rest of the exams uh, as far as AP sciences go. And I think next up, I'm going to put physics one as like a medium hard exam. So this one had an 
percent of students who took the exam earned a five last year. And then overall, um, there is a good chunk of students earning one. So about 22% of students who take this exam earn a one, which is not great. <laughs> but um, you only need a geometry or a ge geometry equivalent, and then hopefully be in Algebra 2 or an Algebra 2 equivalent course in order to take this. So you don't need calculus to take physics one. It can be taken as your first physics class. You don't need a background in physics in order to do well in this one. And about 50% of the students who take this exam end up passing it. All right, so next I'm going to put, and some people say this is one of the easier ones, I'm going to put environmental science next. So we have about 11.9% of students who took this exam in 2020 got a five on it. So that's pretty high five rate um, if you don't look at the physics percentages as well. Um, but you do need about two years of high school lab science before you take AP environmental science, which includes a life science and physical science, um, and along with at least one year of algebra-based math. We do see about a 50% pass rate on this exam, 53.4%, which is pretty decent. We do have a large body of students taking this course. So a lot of students take this as their core environmental science class in their junior or senior years of high school. So we do see kind of a high rate of students earning one on this as well. But I'm going to put this as a little bit easier than physics one just because of the percentage of students earning fives and the overall pass rate is a little bit higher. So environmental science people, you can fight with me on that one. <laughs> okay, next up, I'm going to put physics two as easier than environmental science. And so this again, these three, physics one, environmental science, and physics two, I think I'm going to put a pretty equivalent. Physics is going to involve a little bit more math than the environmental science course. You do need to have AP physics one um, as a prerequisite to physics two or an introductory course in physics. And you should also be taking pre-calculus or an equivalent course. So you might want to bring this one up. To, I don't know. Maybe we should put this up with physics one and just call it a day here. Who knows? <laughs> but um, the relative pass rate on this one is actually pretty high. It's 73.3 percent. Um, and 14 percent of students who take this exam end up getting a five on it. So that's pretty high as well. We'll play around with this one a little bit. I think because of the pass rates and the percentages of fives, I'm going to put this one a little bit easier than environmental science, but you have already have to have been successful at physics one in order to, or an earlier physics course in order to get into physics two, and you have to be in calculus. So, you know, you can argue with me on that one. Okay, down at the bottom, I'm going to put the computer science classes. Not that these are easy, but they might be easier relative to all the other science exams. So for computer science principles, you need successful completion of Algebra 1 or an Algebra 1 related math. But we have about 71.6% of students who take this course passing this exam. So that's really a good pass rate. As far as the collective body of students who take this, maybe they're already interested in computer science, so they're already going to do well. We only have 8.6% of students earning ones on this exam, and a total of almost 11% of students who take this exam getting a five. So it's a little bit harder to get a five. But right next to it, I'm going to put AP Computer Science A, and that one has 25.6% of students who take that exam end up getting the five, which is pretty high. You only need algebra and or algebra-based math and then English familiarity with concepts of functional notation. So again, you need a little bit of prerequisites with that 70.5% pass rate and again, that really high percentage pass rate for the fives. So if you're interested in seeing the data that I pulled for this, I'll link it in the description below. And go ahead and put in the comments, did you take any of these exams? Was one harder than the other? Is the content more tricky? Is the math more tricky? Was the exam itself just really grueling? A lot of this depends on your personal experience, your teacher, the preparation you had before you entered the class. So really think about this. But um, it's generally accepted that Physics C, Chemistry, and Biology are three of the hardest AP Science exams and AP exams overall. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching this video, everybody, and I hope this was helpful. If you want to see more on science education or technology, be sure to subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. See you later.